Okay, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do an October wrap up. Yeah, we're doing my first wrap up on this channel, hypothetically the last. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Because this video is gonna be kind of long, like I can feel it in my bones that it's gonna be super long, I kind of want to just jump into things. And first we're gonna get started with some numbers. If you're curious to see how I calculated all of these numbers, I actually have a post up on my blog. I will link it down below if you're interested in finding out how to use Google Sheets in order to calculate all of these following statistics. I have my sheet right here. This is my filled out reading log and my TBR all filled out, all done for the month. So I'm just going to read you numbers from here. So I read a total of 24 books, 23 if you don't count the book that I finished on November 1st. I read a total of 7,818 pages. The average page per book was 325.8 pages and my average star rating for the month was a 4.1 which I think is pretty good. It took me about an average of four days to finish a book and three days without outliers so there were some read-alongs that I did so it took me a little longer to finish books. I read about 252 pages a day and I listened to eight audiobooks in the month of October. 24 books! Why don't we just jump into it? So the first book that I read in October was Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I loved this book a lot. It was very beautiful and atmospheric. The world building was really great, I think, and all of the characters felt really rich and very much like people you would know in real life. My only qualms with this book is that the uh, murder mystery is a little predictable, but because the book is so beautiful and because it explores so many important topics, I felt that that didn't really detract from my enjoyment of the book, thus I gave it five stars. Um, I also, by the way, got the Barnes Noble exclusive edition, which I love so much. It was so beautiful treat. I highly recommend this book to anyone who is looking for a good coming-of-age story featuring a trans main character um, that is steeped in Latinx culture. The next book I read was City of Brass by S.A. Chapter Bordy. This was for the David Bad Along, which I believe was hosted by Perks and Nora. I loved this from the start. I kind of wish that I had binged it rather than read it throughout the month because there are some times when I forgot kind of what was going on because I was reading it with a read-along. However, that didn't really detract too much from my enjoyment. I mean, I love this book a lot. It is so beautiful and inventive and rich in culture and history and mythologies. I loved the characterization of Dara versus Ali. There's a lot of discussions about how to compare and contrast Dara and Ali and I think all of those discussions are really really thought-provoking and interesting so I've been reading a lot of what other people think of City of Brass. I cannot wait to read the second book. I am getting the second book for my birthday hopefully so I will be reading that soon but I loved City of Brass, highly recommend it. So this wasn't technically the next book that I read. I read this at the end of the month, but it is A Jade City by Fonda Lee. I love this book. If you want to hear more of my thoughts, I have a vlog that I will link up in the cards. T. Mandon. Super excited to read Jade War, which I have up there somewhere. The next book I read was an ebook called The Deep by River Solomon. It's a story about if all of the slaves that were taken from Africa to America that jumped off the ship or were thrown off the ship became mermaids after they hit the water, or after they hit the water, after they like, evolved and um, became accustomed to aquatic life, how that species evolved and how their society is, and then also how their society interacts with the human, or the land world. Um, I thought it was a beautiful story. I wish it was longer. Um, I thought it was so inventive and such an important exploration of that part of history. I won't say about too much about it because it's a short book and you should just read it, but it was really beautiful and I loved it. I gave it five stars. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention all of the books that I mentioned so far are five star reads. The next book I read was actually an audiobook and that was All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. I don't read nonfiction or memoirs, but I did really enjoy this book. The part that really stood out to me was actually the part when Jordan Johnson is in high school and everyone's learning about black history. I doubt that most people are fed kind of a false narrative about Abraham Lincoln where he's this great savior for black slaves when in reality he was kind of just as racist and 
I really recommend the audiobook which was narrated by George M. Thompson as well. That was really cool. The next book I read was a spooky time classic and a reread which was Shirley Jackson's Haunting at Hill House. I reread this for a video in which I compared the TV show adaptation to the book. They're actually not that related at all. It's very loosely based on the book and every single time I reread it more detail and more themes and other important analyses jump out at me so I was really thrilled with rereading this book. Yeah, as you can tell I kind of went ham with the tabs. I will link the video of me talking about this up in the cards. The next book I read was The Girl and the Ghost by Anna Alkoff. This is a middle grade book about a girl who is accompanied by a ghost her entire life. I found this so adorable. I mean, it was a ghost haunting this little girl, but she had, because she was so young and she was so innocent, she wasn't afraid of the ghost, she kind of befriended it. It was a really beautiful story about family and friendship and how you could be controlling and nasty sometimes, but that doesn't mean you really care for someone. Yeah, this is a really cute read. This was a five star read. The next book I read was for a buddy read and that was Bunny by Mona Awad. This was a reread. I actually read this earlier this year and it was a five star read once again. I'm pretty sure everyone knows how much I love this book. The plot twist, I guess, is really cool. It's a weird little book. What can I say? I actually dressed up as a vignette for Halloween, or my kind of take on vignette for Halloween. Yeah, I love this book a lot. I wish I could say more without spoiling it. The next book I read was another audiobook, and that was The Subtweet by Vivek Shraya. Let's just say that I didn't really enjoy it. I was starting to kind of learn that listening to audiobooks kind of makes me more critical of the writing because you are listening to every single word. I feel like with reading you can kind of skim over some words or skip a paragraph or two, but with audiobooks you listen to every single word and that kind of sometimes ruins the experience for me and that was the case for the subtweet. I felt like some of the characters when they were overthinking things it really it really grated on me to hear them overthinking those things because I just wanted them to get on with the plot. I wanted them to talk to each other and stop overthinking things. Unfortunately I think I would have liked it better if I had read it rather than listened to an audiobook. Two stars in the end. So the next book I read was Vampires of Portlandia by Jason Tanamore. This talks about Aswans that live in the US as well as all the Aswans that live or are existing? That exist? Oh boy, English. That exist in the Philippines as well or all over the world I think. They just, they're everywhere. Kind of like real Filipinos. I wanted to love this book so much. You have no idea. I mean, the cover's super cool, it's a Filipino author, but unfortunately it just fell really short. I loved the different timeline, the explanation of the background of the grandmother. Um, I thought that was really cool, especially for making sense of the current timeline. However, the main character, like, really graded on me. I thought he was really dumb, like, for having lived so long and for having been taught by his grandmother, he was still so clueless, and that just, I don't know why it really grated on me. The ending just ruined it for me. It was a solid four stars, and then the ending happened, and I was so upset with how it was all resolved, because at that point, I just wanted Percy to die. <laughs> the ending. So yeah, unfortunately this was a disappointing read. I closed my window, so hopefully there's no noise in the background. Okay, the next book was another audiobook that I listened to via script, and that was The Land of Forgotten Girls by Erin Entrada Kelly. It was just a really tough story about parental abuse and kids kind of just having to deal with the situations they are given when a parent abandons them. So that was a tough read for sure. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Um, the next book that I started reading but I DNF'd, which is did not finish, uh, was Young Elites by Marie Lu, and I feel really bad about this because I really honestly wanted to love it. I think the premise of the book is incredible, and the, the magic system is really cool, but listening to the audiobook was just kind of insufferable. Again, this was me realizing that audiobooks are maybe not the best all the time because I get so critical about the writing style. 
I really don't think Marie Lu's writing is for me, at least the book series of hers that I've read so far. That was my DNF for the month. The next book I read was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This was an awesome book. Um, I loved how slow and creepy it was in the beginning and it, then it slowly built up to the kind of action-y climax. I know a lot of people complain about the beginning of this book being kind of boring, but I personally loved it. I was like freaked out the entire time wondering what's wrong, like why, why is the cousin sick, why are they being so creepy towards Noemi. Really crazy good. Uh, I wasn't a fan of the romance at all, but that was fine. Like I appreciated all of the other elements. I did not see the mushrooms coming. It stays in my mind, so obviously it was a five star read. The next book I read was The Death of Vivek Oji by Akwaike Emezi. I just listened to a clip of someone pronouncing their name and I still messed it up, I think. I'm really sorry about that, but I loved this book to death. It's a story about a character who, to everyone else, at least to his family, they have a strict image of them. It was a really great contrast of our prescribed family, which is the family we're born into, versus our found families as we grow up and, and become adults and find these people who love and care about us just as much as our prescribed families do. I cried a little bit. It was such a tough read, but it was also so beautiful and just a really important discussion on what it means to love someone, what it means to know them, and the lengths you might go to to protect someone you love. I'm so bad at this. Five stars. The next book I read was Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. This one also lives in my mind rent free. This book is crazy. Um, it's the story of this girl Enchanted who is like 16 or 17 years old and she, she catches the eye of a much older, very famous musician and their relationship ensues, let's just say that. that situation might sound familiar to you. If it does, then I think you might know what's going on in this book. But what I liked about this book is that it gives you kind of a fictional first-hand account of what it's like to be in one of those kinds of relationships where there's definitely a huge power imbalance, there's an abuse of power, and as the younger person there's just no knowledge of what's right and what's wrong in a relationship until it's way too late. I definitely do not give Tiffany D. Jackson enough credit when it comes to her social commentary, so from now on I will be reading her books with the social commentary in mind, but the social commentary in this one was absolutely fantastic. Um, I highly recommend. Five stars. So the next book I read was Where Dreams Descend by Janelle Angelis, and I adored this book just like Pretty much everyone else has. It's a fantastic, beautiful, atmospheric story about a girl or a woman trying to break into the magician's world. Um, so there's a lot of commentary in this book about being a woman in a profession where women are very underrepresented. I am a woman of color in STEM, so that storyline really stood out to me. I loved Aros, period of the story and I'm excited for the next book. I wish it was coming out sooner because I really want to know what happened at the end of the first book because I have no idea. I can't explain to you what happened at the very end. Five stars. The next book I read was The Ghost Bride by Yang Si Chu. I actually listened to this on audiobook and then I loved it so much that I went out and bought the physical copy. This follows Li Lan as she is kind of roped into marrying a dead guy. Yeah, I raved about this a lot on Twitter and on Instagram, but it was just such a beautiful and atmospheric book. It was a really rich mix of Chinese and Malaysian cultures because this does take place in colonial Malaya. And yeah, I just, I love this book, you guys. It was so beautiful and just so wonderful to listen to. It kind of brought me out of my anti-audiobook slump because I love listening to every single minute of this, the perfect read for October, and I'm so thankful to Paula from The Paper Reels for suggesting this book to me because it is, it became an instant favorite. Five out of five stars. The next book I listened to was another audiobook, and that was Aru Shah and the Tree of Wishes, which is the third book in the Pandava Quartet. I loved this one a lot, just as much as the other two, especially because we got introduced to 
more of the Pandava sisters. It was really nice to listen to this on audiobook because I had definitely been mispronouncing some things in my head, so the audiobook kind of helped me to correct myself. It was a 5 out of 5 stars. So the next book I read was Severance by Ling Ma, which was a 4 out of 5 star read. I think I was a total dumbass. I think I called this a zombie horror novel, but it's absolutely not that at all. It's actually about a pandemic in the US where masks aren't enough. Yeah, it was freaky. This is so freaky to read in 2020. The fallout of the pandemic is a lot worse in this book. Uh, society completely falls apart and you kind of see what happens. It was a really cool story reflecting back on life before the pandemic and comparing it to current pandemic life, which I think is something that we all do. It was a little disappointing because it didn't quite get to where I wanted it to be with the social commentary. It was still a really entertaining book. Okay, we're getting there guys, I promise. The next book I read was Vampire Academy by Rochelle Mead. I didn't like this book. I gave it 2 out of 5 stars, I'm not going to say too much about it. It's definitely very, very YA, takes place in a high school, and uh, I think the thing that stood out to me more is that it's very, very white YA. Not for me, but I'm glad I read it, because now I can say that I've read it and I know what everyone's talking about when they talk about Rose and Lissa and everything in the Vampire Academy. The next book I read was The Obelisk Gate by M.K. Jemisin, and of course, 5 out of 5 stars, this was beautiful, it was awesome. I was kind of in a reading slump and this brought me out of it, made me want to read again because as always M.K. Jemison just blew it out of the water. It's chef's kiss. So yeah, I love this one a lot. It introduces the main character from the first book's daughter and it continues on with that story while also kind of bringing back old characters from the first book that may not have been mentioned as much. And yeah, they finally brought up the moon, that's all I'm gonna say. The next book I read was Ghost Boys by Jewel Parker Rhodes on audiobook. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. It's a story about a black boy who is killed by a police officer and he becomes a ghost to kind of see what happens after he dies. I think it's a middle grade book so I was interested to see how that author was going to handle that. I also echo a lot of other people's gripe about this book where I wish there was more of Emmett Till in the book. And I really wish that Emmett had helped the main character sort of deal with all of the emotions of having been killed due to racism. 3 out of 5 stars, it had a lot of potential but didn't quite get there. The next audiobook I listened to was Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie McLemore. Mac Mac I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars, kind of we're going right back to the um, gripes about audiobooks where I was having trouble enjoying the book as much because I was like listening to an audiobook version. Mostly had to do with, there was a lot of really great commentary in there, but via audiobook it's laid down very very strong and so I was getting a little exasperated towards the end. I think it's a really beautiful story and I loved the, I actually really enjoyed the Red Shoes retelling. It, as an audiobook, it just did not work out as well for me. The next book I read was Loveless by Alice Oseman. This was another 3 out of 5 star read, and I think I'm going to stop reading Alice Oseman books. I also didn't like the fact that there was absolutely no mention of academic life at all, but the constant drinking during the week when you have classes just, ah, stressed me out. But I do want to say that this was a really important story about learning about sexual identities sexual preferences, and the societal pressures on kids these days to try and figure out what they like or who they like um, at perhaps a too young age. The next book I read was Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. This was unfortunately a two star read for me. I know I read a lot of classics so I'm used to this kind of language, but I didn't appreciate it that much in this setting, especially with the magic system and everything going on. It fell short for me. We're finally there, we're at the last book. So the very last book that I read for October and that I technically finished on the 1st of November was Girl Serpent Thorn by Melissa Bashardust. I ended up giving this a 4, four out of 5 stars. Detail in the right places but also in the wrong places. I wish that there were some things that could have been explored more and I think there was definitely space for that. Like this is only like a 300 page book. <gasps> Did I do that? Oh no! Well, 
I enjoyed this book for the most part, despite the folded page. I liked at the very beginning that uh, Azad is a character that is introduced, and he's very heartwarming at first. Like, you're like, oh my god, it's this guy who says all the right things. But then you're like, wait, it's this guy who says all the right things. There's something wrong with the situation. I really enjoyed that part of the book. Um, how it kind of evolved into something bigger, and that kind of brought everything together. I'd be interested to read more by this author to see if they flesh out some of the stuff that wasn't fleshed out in this book, in other books. Oh my god, I read 24 books this month. Taking this thumbnail is going to- let's try this, let's try this right now. Let's try this right now. Mm. Yeah, no, no, we're going down. Um, So, um, yeah, that's my first wrap up. That was probably terrible. I'm probably gonna hate myself while editing this, but it's fine. Let me know what you guys think, if this was chaotic or not. If you want to know anything about the books I talked about but I didn't discuss it enough, leave a comment, send me a message, all that good stuff. I don't think I have anything else to say. I think I wrapped up October. I filmed a wrap up. Cool. Alright, well I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week, rest of your day, weekend, whenever I post this, and I will see you next time.